We are continuing in lesson 7.3 today. We have a back side of the notes to do. I asked you guys to work on this problem at the top. It goes directly with what we did at the end of class yesterday, right? We had a formula on the front side. Did you guys get the formula? The log of I1 divided by I2 is equal to, is it M1 minus M2? Yeah. Okay, M1 minus M2. You're asked here to compare the intensities of two earthquakes, one registering 8.0 and one registering 6.8. What are 8.0 and 6.8? Those are the magnitudes, right? So you're going to fill those in for the magnitudes. The log of I1 over I2 is equal to, what's M1? 8.0 minus 8 minus M2, which is 6.8. So the log of I1 over I2 is equal to 1.2. Now, when we're trying to compare the intensities, we want to know what is the ratio of I1 divided by I2, the first intensity divided by the second intensity. What did we do here at this point yesterday? Okay. First of all, remember if there's no base written on the log, what is the automatic base if nothing's here? That is a 10, right? The invisible 10. How do we get out of log form? What was our phrase yesterday? Left, right, middle. And so if you recall, the 10 on the left is raised to the... 1.2 on the right, and it equals the middle value, which in this case is the first intensity divided by the second intensity. So this is where you grab the calculator, right? Intensity 1 divided by intensity 2. Well, what is 10 raised to the 1.2? Point I wrote down 15.8489 dot 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 in my notes, which is approximately how many times stronger? 16. Approximately 16 times as strong. Which to me seems like a lot when it's only a 1.2 difference on the Richter scale or 1.2 difference in magnitude, but yet it's 16 times as strong. That seems like quite a bit. Okay, so just a little bit of review there. Get us started. We got to review the idea of left, right, middle, if you recall. That's our phrase we're going to use when we're going back and forth between log form and exponential form. And I know you guys are anticipating and just so excited about the next part. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Right? No. I'm trying to think you're hilarious. Okay. We got to talk graphs, right? Graphing. No. Yes. We got to talk graphing. No, now, okay. I have this on another page, so we have a little more room to work. We're being asked to graph. What's the graph of each of the following? Find the intercept and asymptote. So, do you know anything about what the graph y equals log base 3 of x looks like? No. Absolutely. Okay, and I don't expect you to, right? This is the first introduction. I don't expect you to. So what do we usually say if we don't know what a graph looks like? Excellent. We're going to say, okay, we're going to do an XY chart, yes? Now, and we are going to do an XY chart. What do we normally do? We normally... Notice I say normally. We normally pick negative one, negative two, zero, one, two. Okay. And we put those negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and we put those in for X. X. Now, do you know what log base three of two is? Do you know what log base three of one is? What log base three of zero is? Log base three of negative one, negative two? You don't know those, do you? Okay. I don't know those, so you're all good. Can your calculator tell you those? No. Well, it can. 
Why can my calculator not tell me the only has a base of 10. My calculator will only tell me base of 10. Okay, so we need a plan B here. And as I said, I went ahead and drew the XY chart. We are going to talk XY chart. But we can't really talk about XY chart while it's in a log form. What, what form can I take this log form to? We can use left, right, middle. And we're going to be going to exponential form. Now, if it bothers you right here, you could rewrite this and say log base 3 of x equals y, if you need that visual there. But we're going to use a left-right middle to get out of log form. Because I can't graph with log form. I don't know the information. So if we use left-right middle, what's this become? What's left? What's the base of the log? 3. Three. To the power of y equals x. Are we getting a little closer to graphing? Yeah. Okay. Could you flip that? Could it be x equals 3 to the y? You can make it x equals 3 to the y. That would be equivalent. Okay. Now. If we go back to Justin earlier suggested, okay, my x values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Can you do that? Do you know 3 to what value equals 2? That's not something we know, is it? What was your thought, Lorna? You could put the 1, 2, blah, 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 and the y, and then just put the answer in the end. Okay. So what we're going to do? Normal rule of thumb is to pick x's. But today, instead, I need you to pick y's. So our normal y values we like to use, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So big deal here is, yeah, we're working backwards. We're going to pick our y's. I thought you were writing p of c we picked our y's, and so that's how we have the negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And actually, I'll put it down here that we're going to use y's to find x's. Okay, that's what we're doing is we're using y's to find x's. And the reason we're doing that is because y is in the exponent. Okay, let's, you guys want to start at the bottom? I'll avoid the negative numbers briefly for you. So if we put 2, this is a y value, so we're putting 2 into y. What's 3 to the second? 9. So that 9 is my x because it equals x. Put in 1. 1 is y value, so 3 to the first? 3. 3. So that is my x value. Now we're going to put in 0. 3 to the 0. One. Anything raised to the power of 0 is always 1. So we're going to put a 1 here in the x value. Okay, we've got to attack the negatives now. 3 to the power of y. 3 to the negative 1. Yeah, do you remember how to do this, guys? 3 to the negative 1 is how you make a negative exponent positive. You take it to the denominator. So 3 to the negative first is 1 third. Those of you guys that went the calculator route, you got 0 0.3333333333, right? Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's equivalent. So what about the negative 2? 3 to the negative 2 is going to be 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. Those of you that went the calculator out got 0 0.1111111 repeating, right? How many ones do you want to say there? Okay. Let's graph this. 1 ninth negative 2. So I'm going to go very, very little to the right, and I'd prefer to go down, too. 
since it's negative. Okay, so one ninth, negative two. So I went right a teeny bit, a ninth of a box, and I went down two. Then one third negative one. I'm gonna go right a teeny bit more, and down one. One zero. Right one, up or down zero. Three one. Right three, up one. Nine two. Right nine, up two. Does this shape seem familiar? Yeah, yeah. it doesn't cross. This one doesn't cross the line. Okay. Keep in mind, the exponential function and the log function are inverses. We talked about that yesterday. That's This is the inverse of an exponential function. Difference is, guess what? Our graph is never, ever going to cross the y-axis. It get, runs along, gets closer and closer. And it is going to go up and to the right. We move on to the next one, a couple little things. I believe this pops up in Math Excel, which is a good reason for me to mention it. But up in the directions, it said find the intercept and the asymptote. We just mentioned the asymptote, yes? What line are we never ever crossing, getting closer and closer to, but never ever crossing? Why? That is the officially, well, unofficially, you guys called it the y-axis, correct? Now, Math Excel probably would not want y-axis. They would want to know the equation for that line. And the equation for that line, it's a vertical line that crosses through the x-axis at zero. So what's the equation of that line? X equals zero. Because any time a vertical line is always x equals a number, whatever number it crosses through. So this is x equals zero. Okay, so the y-axis is always x equals zero. Now, what do I mean by intercept? Where does this graph cross? An axis, right? So when we talk about intercept, I'm talking about where does this graph, where does it cross, where does it cross an axis? Where does this graph, graph cross an axis? At one on the x-axis, which is the ordered pair, one comma zero. Okay. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Try this here. But the idea I'm just going to draw this in dotted line. But here's the idea of what the equivalent function with exponential function would look like. Okay? Notice, do you see the reflection here? Because the idea of inverses is that inverses reflect. That's not what I wanted to do. Try that again. Inverses reflect across the line y equals x. Well, the line y equals x is that diagonal line I just drew. If I took that graph and folded it in half, would those two graphs land on top of each other? And they would. Okay, so remember inverses x and y values switch? This is what the inverse looks like. That's what we were graphing last week, wasn't it? So that should seem familiar there. 
Okay. Ready to try B? Okay, well, for the rest of us, I have to catch up with you then. It's not what I meant to hit. There we go. Okay, B. Y equals log base 4 of X. Do you have a log base 4 button on your calculator? We do not. So how am I going to write this since I don't have a log base 4 button on my calculator? Okay. 4, the base of 4, raised to the Y on the other side, equals the X. So 4 to the Y equals X. What values do I want to use on my XY chart? Uh, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Which side of the XY chart am I putting those on? Those are the Y's, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Y. You guys fighting over answers back there? Okay. Because Y is in the exponent, that's why I'm picking Y's. Because it's really hard for me to do this otherwise. So, if I start at the bottom, what's 4 to the second? Sixteen. I know I have others in this class. I know I do. Mm -hmm. I know. I'll take it. Four to the first? Four. Four to the zero? One. Anything raised to the power of zero is one. Four to the negative first? One fourth. One fourth. Because remember it becomes one over four to the first. What about four to the negative second? One sixteenth. Four to the negative two is one over four squared. Okay. Graph them. One sixteenth negative two. Right a tiny smidge. Down two. One fourth negative one. Right a little bit. Down one. One zero, right one up or down zero, four one, right four up one, sixteen two. Well, let's see. Here's ten, here's eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Mine ends up over by my negative one. I mean, you can guess it, right? You can guesstimate there. Okay, as I draw this graph, what do we know? We're never going to cross the y-axis. And as we go off right, we're this one we're going up, just not very fast. We're going off to the right very quickly, but not up very fast. What about um, the asymptote? It's still the y-axis. It's still x equals 0. What about any intercepts? What axis do we cross? We still cross the x-axis at 1, so 1, comma 0. Okay? So I'm not going to write that information down again. It didn't change. And it's not going to change unless your graph is shifted or something. Okay? okay. One more problem when you guys are ready. not as bad as you think. You already know how to do this next one. Okay. Now, I know it's not your favorite word in math, but describe, which means our answer is going to be using words. words. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to describe how the graph of each function compares with the graph of the parent function, y equals log base b of x. So y equals log base b of x is what we just graphed, right? Yeah. We graphed what? Log base 3, log base 4. You saw they were the same general shape, weren't they? Yeah. So log function, same general shape. Now, okay, guys. I see a log. This one's base 4, and I see an x. Think. 
What are those other numbers doing? Elena, you said what? Okay, right there, guys. When it's multiplied by a 2 out front, that's vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And I'm going to write it out in like a paragraph form here in a moment, but... Okay, Justin says the number added or subtracted in the parentheses is left or right, opposite the sign. So this minus 3 says I'm going to be going right 3. And up 4. A number added or subtracted at the end is up or down the direction of the sign. So up 4. Now, as I write my answer out, okay, and I put it in official words and I coherent like sentence, what is my basic graph that all of this is being done to? Okay, log base what in this particular point? So officially, we're taking the graph of y equals log base 4 of x and doing all these things to it. So, I'm going to say the graph of y equals log base 4 of x. That was a sloppy 4. There we go. The graph of y equals log base 4 of x is vertically stretched. by a factor of 2 and what's the word we use to go right 3 and up 4? Translated. Translated. Good word. Translated right 3 and up Four units. You had something on the last test like this, right? Yeah. Some of you succeeded with it, some of you not so much. You know, Algebra 2, all year long, we've been talking about how to do these graph transformations. We're still talking about it, right? Almost three-fourths of the way through the school year, and we're still talking about it. Okay. Your homework, of course, is lesson 7.3 in Math Excel. Unless you have a 100, you should be working on it. I can't believe the name of this. If you're about to cover it, you're going to put the thing